Hello everybody, um, Happy New Year for 2015. Um, uh, I haven't been, uh, I haven't done a video, especially a music video, for a while now because of uh, Christmas and New Year and all that sort of thing, you know, it's terribly distracting. Um, and I've been feeling a bit guilty, but um, uh, anyway, here we go again. Um, so, um, uh, for this video, I would like to talk about um, a very remarkable British composer, early 20th century composer, who ought to be a lot better known, called Peter Warlock. Peter Warlock. His most famous pieces are probably uh, a piece called the Capriol Suite, which is a very nice um, set of dances. Uh, there, it's arrangements of um, uh, Renaissance dances for string orchestras. That's quite popular and gets played on the radio quite often these days. And the other probably most famous thing of him his is a carol called Bethlehem Down, and that's it's a very haunting uh, uh, carol, and it's done quite often at Christmas. It was done here in Oxford at uh, the carol service this Christmas, on Christmas Eve, which I went to. Um, but he wrote a lot of other music besides that, and he's a very interesting composer, and, and I'm very fond of his music. Um, and what he's best known for, um, I mean, I mentioned those two uh, pieces, uh, quite a few choral works. There's another big piece called The Curlew, which is the setting of... Uh, Played by Yeats for um, voice and ensemble with a cor anglais solo. But what he's most known for, and what he spent most of his life doing, was writing songs. And he wrote about 150 songs. Um, and I think some of those songs are some of the most beautiful uh, and perfect English songs of the 20th century, I think, uh, classical songs. Um, and uh, he is a very curious figure, and uh, in some ways rather a tragic one. He had a very short life. He died when he was 36, and he almost certainly died he, at his own hand. He almost certainly committed suicide uh, um, by um, gassing himself. He was found in a room with the doors and windows bolted and with the gas oven turned on. Uh, he was uh, not a very happy person, although he, could, he was probably what we nowadays call a manic depressive or bipolar. He, he, he used to have frenzied periods of wild activity and he was also well known for heavy drinking and um, carryings on. In fact some of his songs, quite amusing ones, are basically drinking songs. Um, so he led a wild life and he would have these periods of frenzied activity and enthusiasm then he would uh, sink into depression. Um, he was actually born in, uh, let me see, it was, he was born in 1894 and he died in 1930 so he was about 36 when he died, um, and well, he uh, was strongly influenced by uh, uh, another famous British, British composer called Delius. Delius is probably better known than uh, Warlock. Um, Delius wrote a lot of famous pieces, particularly one called uh, On Hearing the First Cuckoo in, on, in Spring, um, The Florida Suite, a lot of other things. His music has a very particular character, and De uh, uh, Warlock was very influenced by this. It has, it, it particularly uses very chromatic harmony. Chromatic means that um, it sort of slides from one chord to another in a in a kind of indirect way, creating a rather ambiguous effect. Rather than just separate, clear, separate major and minor chords, uh, different notes will move a semitone up or a semitone down, uh, and it creates this. Chromatic means coloured, colour, kind of a set of uh, very ambiguous colours, and so you get uh, you'll get say a, a simple tune, uh, and this is what Warlock specialised in. It's a very simple tune, but underneath it, these very curious and ambiguous and subtle harmonies, and I think that's what makes his song so powerful. Um, and the song I want to uh, introduce people to today, if they don't know it already, is a setting of a poem called Sleep. Sleep, and it's it's uh, by um, let me think, it's by a, an Elizabethan poet called uh, John Fletcher, 1579 to 1625. And it's a very haunting poem indeed, and I think uh, beautifully set here. Um, Peter Warlock's real name, actually, was Philip Heseltine. This is another strange thing, that he, he actually adopted a pseudonym to compose music. And in some ways you could say he was... Uh, he had a kind of schizophrenic personality. Um, he was originally of Welsh descent. He went to Eton College, uh, where he still remembered. I went to an amazing workshop 
few years ago there where they did all of Warlock's songs and that was really amazing and that's what really alerted me to the incredible variety and beauty of his songs and then he, he for a while he came to Oxford he, he was at Christchurch one of the colleges of Oxford University but that didn't work out very well and then he became a, a music critic he lived in London uh, and, and near London in Kent a place called Ainsford in Kent uh, where he used to scandalise people by riding around at great speed on a motorbike and getting wildly drunk with his friends. Um, anyway, all that aside, um, he was actually a very sensitive artist. And this song, Sleep, I think is one of his best songs and one of the most perfect songs, <coughs> excuse me, uh, song settings uh, of the 20th century in English. So um, I'm not going to talk about it much more than that. There's not much more to say, but um, if you think about the circumstances of Warlock's life, um, that makes the poem even more poignant. So I'd just like to read the poem to you and then um, I will introduce a recording of it. Come sleep, and with thy sweet deceiving, lock me in delight a while. Let some pleasing dreams beguile all my fancies, that from thence I may feel an influence all my powers of care bereaving. Though but a shadow, but a sliding, let me know some little joy. We that suffer long, annoy, are contented with a thought through an idle fancy wrought. Oh, let my joys have some abiding. Oh. 